everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today I'm gonna to talk about UV resin. And if you don't know what UV resin is, it's a urethane resin that sets up when exposed to UV light, either sunlight or any other source of UV light, like a flashlight or a spotlight or any other light source that has the right wavelength. That's somewhere between 365 nanometers to 395 nanometers. So, but we're not gonna to get too much into the technical stuff. What I really wanna do is just talk about the questions you guys have asked and I want to review a new resin source that I got. This is a UV resin from Total Boats, of all people. Now, I guess that's not much of a departure for Total Boats. Total Boats is known for high quality marine resins for fiberglassing and fairing and all that kind of stuff, and marine paints. What really attracted me to this thing is that while I was shopping to replace the Chinese brand I usually buy, which is good quality, I ran across Total Boats. And this is also a 200 gram bottle, just like this one. The Chinese version I can pick up usually between $19 and $22 to $23. And if you're interested in buying these or checking them out online, you can look at my Amazon store. I try to keep current link with the best price I can find out there. So what initially attracted me to this thing, well, was the name. I know it's a pretty trusted name in sort of resins. And then I noticed that it was right about the same price, around $23, $24. But then the real kicker is that it comes with a flashlight, a UV flashlight. And I've gone ahead and put some batteries in it. So I'm hoping this thing actually does a good job setting small projects like when I'm dressing a treble hook or when I'm just setting some UV resin I'm using for glue. So we're gonna go ahead and put this thing through its paces. I'm going to go ahead and clear coat a lure that already has a clear coat on it, but it's scratched up and see how it does as an overlay. And I'm gonna clear coat a lure that I just painted and we'll see how that turns out. All Check. right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make a few of these little dome eyes. This is a mold I made to make large 3D eyes. And all I'm gonna do is fill a couple of these these little divots full of the resin. That'll give us a chance to see the clarity of the resin and how well it pours, what the viscosity is. Now, you're gonna notice that this, this thing is dirty and that's one of the questions I've gotten recently is, how do you get a silicone mold clean because everything wants to stick to it? There's a certain static cling to this stuff. A nice trick is to take some masking tape and then just pat it around your mold, sticky side out, and that usually captures all the dust and particles. All right, let's open this thing up. Well, it definitely was sealed. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and use a little pouring nozzle. Let's see how clear it comes out and how easily. It has a pretty thick viscosity. I've definitely had resins that had thinner viscosity that poured faster. Let's just do three. All right, so I've got this little spotlight mounted here onto the wall. It's 10 watts at 395 nanometers and has a pretty good intensity up close and will set the typical resins I use pretty quickly. And I'll give it 10 seconds, just count it in my head. All right, so it's been about 10 seconds. I'm gonna check the hardness first by just touching it with my finger and feeling how much residue there is on it. There's absolutely none, which that's actually pretty amazing. Usually after 10 seconds on a thick pour like this, there's a little bit of an oily residue. So let me go ahead and put it under there for another 10 seconds and then I'll pull it out and I'll see if the inside of the dome is set. All right, so I gave it another 10 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and pull one of these little domes out of the mold and we'll take a look at it. So that looks pretty good. It's crystal clear. Actually, there's a tiny bit of residue on the inside. So that tells me that 20 seconds is just a little too short a time for this thick set. And it looks like all three are about the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the cure. 10 seconds on the palm of my hand, it shouldn't be too bad. So there's no tackiness to them now. So I think the set time on this product is at least as fast as the stuff I'm getting from China. It definitely feels hard with my finger and it definitely feels hard with this very sharp point. I can't scratch it, but it takes quite a bit to get it to scratch. So I gotta give it a pretty high score on that. Takes. All right, so I'm pretty impressed with that. It actually set up in the same amount of time that my big spotlight did it, and it came out pretty nice and solid, and definitely not sticky or slimy. At this point, I should probably say I'm not sponsored by anybody, especially not Total Boat, and I paid for this out of my own pocket. I didn't get any freebies. I don't want anybody to think that I have a skewed opinion of this, but I'm getting pretty excited. I think it sets up just a little bit faster. All right, 
so just looking at obvious differences, the stuff I typically use is actually epoxy resin. And this stuff is an acrylic urethane. What exactly that's gonna mean in the end, I'm not sure. I do know that just by sniffing it, this smells a little like stagnant water. And this stuff has a real chemical smell to it. Both of them are pretty mild, but I have to say the acrylic urethane seems to have less odor. But one of the things I wanna test for is the compatibility. So I'll be clear coating over uh, an epoxy clear coat that I've already done on lure. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and do a, a lure. And this is a lure that I silver plated and then I've caught a bunch of fish on it. I don't know if you can see, but it's got a pretty good hook rash on it. It's got a lot of teeth marks from the fish and I haven't done anything to this thing at all. I'm gonna wipe it down with some alcohol to make sure I don't have any oils on it. And then we're gonna put a clear coat on it with the Total Boat product. Let's see how it comes out. All right, I'm gonna use a clean brush that I cleaned with acetone so I know it's nice and clean. So one of the questions I often get is, uh, how, how big a light do I need? How much wattage do I need? And really the pat answer to that is as much as you can afford to put on there. And it's as much as you can fit in uh, whatever arrangement you have for setting your lures. The, the key here is what they call wattage density. How much energy, how many watts you can get onto a surface. You don't have to be an engineer, just get yourself uh, as much wattage as you can get. Make sure you got the right wavelength uh, on the light. So this seems to be going on pretty smoothly. I'm not seeing any fish eyes. I like the way it, it goes on with the brush. All right, I'm done with this. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here and get it started turning. So the next test we're gonna do is to go ahead and clear coat a lure that I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a paint job on it. It's a top water lure that came out a little bit flawed from the casting. So I'm gonna put an experimental paint job on it. But the key is here is I'm gonna paint it and then directly coat it. So typically I'll use this stuff. It's a water-based finish, it's crystal clear, and I use it as a sealer for the paint. So it's a mid coat that I spray on with my airbrush. I give it a couple coats, let it dry, and then I put my UV resin clear coat on it. And what I find is that that gives me a more uniform finish and a much more predictable finish. This is an experiment, so I wanna see how the Total Boat resin is gonna behave directly on the paint. All right, so here's our ugly duckling lure. Let's go ahead and put a clear coat on this thing. Yeah, I really like the way this stuff spreads. And it doesn't seem to be forming a lot of bubbles, so I'm not gonna hit it with a torch or anything like that. So one of the tricks you can use to increase the watt density in your uh, curing chamber is to have reflective surfaces on the inside. And you can see I have reflective surfaces everywhere on my turner. And I find like the best stuff to use is this vinyl self-adhering stuff. You can get this stuff online pretty inexpensively. A lot of people ask me, can I use a mirror? And yeah, absolutely you can use a mirror. A lot of people think that the mirror will filter out the UV rays because they heard that the windshield of their car filters out like 99% of the UV. Well, that's UVB. UVA is what we're using and it'll go right through glass. So feel free to use glass mirrors. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lights on both sides. And I'll go ahead and monitor this. I'm gonna open this up every 10 minutes and check how hard it is. Now you might be wondering if I was able to set the other stuff in 10 to 20 seconds and the bottle itself says two to 10 minutes. Why am I gonna leave that in there so long? Well, we're back to light density. So I have eight of these nine watt bulbs in there. So that's 72 watts. That's not a lot for a box that big. So I need to give it a little bit of time. Typically I allow my lures to set for at least an hour and I try to go two hours hours if I have the time to leave it there. A lot of folks will say I, I pull my lure out of the chamber and when I touch it, it feels a little bit like it's a little wet or tacky. And they wonder, is it the light or is it the resin? And it's most likely just the amount of time you have it under that light. You've got to have it close to the light and if you can't, then you've got to give it more time. Of course, if you've got the wrong light, it's not going to set well. All right, I gave it a five minute check and it's hard to the touch, but you can smell that it hasn't really set. And that's another way to know if it's really fully set, because a lot of times it'll be hard to the touch, but you smell it and it'll still have a pretty strong resin smell to it. All right, so after my 30 minute review, it's rock hard, but this one, the one with the new paint job, is just a little bit ripply. There's just a little bit of a ripple in the finish. 
you can see it right there in the reflection. And that's typically what I end up with if I don't put a mid coat on. So let's go ahead and spray a mid coat on this thing since it's already set. I'll let that dry for about an hour and then I'll put another clear coat of the total boat stuff and see if that fixes the problem. If not, then we may have an issue with this product. Okay. All right, I put the mid coat on there and it's dried pretty well. And I'm putting this clear coat on here and it's going on really nicely. But again, it actually did that on the first coat too. So we'll see. So I just want to announce that I probably won't be able to put a video out next week. I'm going to be traveling to go see family. I'm going to be about as far from Florida as you can get and still be in the States. I'll be up in Oregon or Northern Oregon. Stay tuned for the week after that. Hopefully we'll be back to uh, building lures or maybe we'll get a fishing trip in. All right, so it's been a while. We can get these out of here. First, let me show you what it looks like when you put this stuff over the epoxy resin. All right, so this side doesn't look horrible. It looks a little bit wavy, but you could probably attribute that to the original condition. But on this side, it's really obvious that it does not like to be on the epoxy resin. You can see where it's pulled away from it. It's kind of stacked up down here. So that means I can't do an overlayer on the existing lures that I have that I already have an epoxy layer on. So let's see how the other one came out. All right, so this looks pretty good. And the finish looks flawless. Really nice sheen. I think it might be a little more glossy than the epoxy. And it feels nice and smooth, and it's definitely hard. So this was kind of an experimental paint job. I'm calling this color scheme blood scales. Although I'm not sure I'll ever paint anything like this again. All right, so to round up my review of the Total Boats UV clear resin, ease of use is about the same as any other UV I've used. The only thing I would say is it sets up a little faster. It's just as hard. There's less odor. It is crystal clear and pretty much like the other resins, it doesn't like to go directly on the airbrush paint, but you can apply a second coat with just a wipe down without alcohol. But as this one showed, you can't mix and match. You cannot put this acrylic urethane over the epoxy resin. What I do like about it is how quickly it sets, which really makes for easy repairs and a quick light coat on your original carving. So overall, I give this thing an A and I give the little flashlight an A plus, mostly because of the cost. It was free with the resin, but it works really well. It has plenty of intensity. It sets up this resin really quickly. All right, everyone, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. I won't be posting next week, but keep an eye on the community postings because I'll try to post some photographs. I'm gonna try to get some fishing in while I'm up in the Northwest, or at the very least, tour a nice boat yard. So I'll see you guys later. And I gotta say, this paint job is starting to grow on me. All right, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks.